Whether you're looking for answers to specific life questions or seeking to become the best version of you possible, welcome to the Mental Breakdown and Psych Reg podcast, where we offer insight, information, and strategies based upon research and years of practice as clinical psychologists. So sit back, have a listen, and get connected with our hosts, Dr. Bernie Wilkinson and Dr. Richard Marshall. Welcome back uh, to our second day talking about the Big Five, sometimes called the Sci Five. Sci Five? Sci Five. The, 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 oh, PSI. The, the PSI, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, the Sci Five. And today. When you said science. Yes. S- S C I, my pal. Oh, like science fiction. Right, right. Uh, yes, you sci-fi. PSI. That's I a different... See. That's our other podcast that talks about science fiction. Star Wars. Well, oh, Star yeah. Wars is more fantasy than that's science fiction. That's when you and she were sort of poking sport at me. Cause oh, I, that interview with Remember the little Heather. character in the background? Yeah. I said, it looks like Batman, and you two cracked up because it, was, it wasn't... It wasn't Batman. It was somebody else. I, I think it was Doctor Strange. It was Doctor. Yes. No, no, no. It was Magneto. Actually, Magneto. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. And you both laughed because we I did. I thought it was Batman. And... You could tell by the helmet. Yeah. No, I it couldn't tell. But anyway, <laughs> you you throw me every once in a while, and so when you said Sai, I thought S-C-I. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But these are the five <laughs> the characteristics. Five, yes, personality, personality, personality characteristics that we oftentimes associate with. Uh, with individuals and we and we you know there's uh, one of the things again we're going to talk about at the end of the week when we do our, our uh, bigger show on the history of personality theory we'll talk about how some of the different combinations of traits and character uh, of mm-hmm. these big five um, sort of contribute to and lead to certain right. attributes about people um, right. you know if you're if you're very extroverted and you're very open to new experiences mm-hmm. you know this it kind of suggests this and that and right. those kinds of things so yeah because in a previous podcast was about extroversion right and how people yeah. um, are somewhere on that extroversion to introversion right and this is openness today right. we're going to talk about, gonna openness, talk about openness which is the yeah. are you open to new experience yeah. are you available to are you curious um, we 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 want our partners to be similar to us mm-hmm. in these regards. Um, but we also think about it in terms of children because right. there are some children who are curious and they're interested and they ask questions. Um, and so they're open to new ideas and they're open to new experiences. Right. right? And we, we, it's easier to see in children than it is in adults. I right. Mm-hmm. And, and openness, uh, you know, like uh, as is the case with all of these things that we, we talk about when it comes to personality, there is a spectrum. Right. Uh, uh, of course, on one end is is very open uh, to mm-hmm. new experiences, often seeking new experiences, often mm-hmm. looking for that novelty uh, of things, and then mm-hmm. of course you have people who are more closed right. um, and, and less they, they are. You know, the other week we talked about when we were talking about those different continua, we were talking about um, homeostasis versus heterostasis, right. mm-hmm. and so openness sort of almost mirrors that a little bit because right. you know those people who are. Um, uh, hetero, seek heterostasis that, that are looking for new things that they want change they want different things to happen are, are people who tend to be a little bit more open whereas right. people who are maybe seek homeostasis they, mm-hmm. they, they want things to be the same they, they want that Seeking constant stability state. and mm-hmm. yeah they're, they're right. a little bit more closed to new experiences right. but but let's talk a little bit about what um, what people what openness looks like Mm -hmm. um because again we're looking for we're we're looking at the idea of people who who seek um experiences and and appreciate experiences really just for the sake of this experience itself Mm -hmm. they're they're not necessarily doing it because it's an assignment they're not necessarily doing it because they're going to get something out of it right except for the experience itself. That's right. It's, and I think that's the key factor here is that we're talking about the, they're not getting anything for it. Right. They, they just have this sort of curiosity about mm-hmm. the world, the curiosity about people, curiosity about things. And it just is, I think, I think that's the, the best way to do it is they don't, they're not doing it to get a grade. They're not mm-hmm. doing it to impress them. They're just open to new experiences, new ideas. Right, right. right. Okay. So they tend to be, you know, so these individuals tend to, mm-hmm. Um, uh, accept imagination, right. create you know that kind of creativity. Uh, they're very appreciative of art and mm-hmm. beauty and and sort of uh, emotions and you know they're just kind of open to a lot right. of those kinds of mm-hmm. things. Yeah. You know they're they're seeking 
activities or experiences that elicit feeling and elicit um, some type of movement in, right. in, within them. And we see it in, in adults and children when right. you're talking to somebody about something. Some children will just, their eyes are wide open yeah. and you can tell they're just absorbing it and they're fascinated by it. And others are kind of nonchalant mm -hmm. and not terribly mm -hmm. interested. Again, there's nothing wrong with either one. It's right. not that one is right. better, but we like to see, we'd like to see openness mm -hmm. and curiosity. Um, it's, it's something we, we value, right. uh, to be sure. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And these individuals, they tend to, to go out and, and look for experiences. Right. They, mm -hmm. they tend to be those people who, who try new things, mm -hmm. again, just sort of for the sake of trying new things. They, they just want to do something uh, that they've never done before to see what it's like, to see what it feels like. Yeah. When you live in a town, um, doesn't matter whether it's a big, a big city or a small town, there's always a, um, usually in the newspaper, now on a website, um, of activities mm -hmm. that are mm -hmm. going on. Right. In Florida, we have, um, in the wintertime, we have uh, festivals, outdoor right. festivals. And there's a schedule in the paper of all the things mm -hmm. that are going on. And people who are open to new experiences, mm -hmm. check the paper, find out what's going on, say, okay, on Saturday, we're going to do this. And on right. Sunday, we're going right. to do this. Those are people who are open to new experiences. Mm -hmm. Whereas other people don't do that. And they just sort of go into the weekend and have that calm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. stable, yeah. the homeostasis yeah. kind of person. Where the others are every weekend, let's look and see what's going on. Where, yeah. where can we go? What can we eat? Where, what can we see? What can we experience? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and I think that um, it, it's interesting that you, you mentioned, you know, what, where can we eat? Because that's that's one thing that you see very often mm -hmm. in people who are open is they, they, they are very open to the idea of, of trying new things, right. in, including new, new foods and new, right. um, you know, trying out things that they've never mm -hmm. tried before. And that, that may, maybe even many people wouldn't do. And, and so, you know, you, you see this in your children, as you've kind mm -hmm. of mentioned there are kids who have a very restricted <laughs> diet. That's right. They eat three foods, four right. foods. And yeah. then there are those kids who will eat anything They'll that you put in front anything. of them. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's sort of that idea of openness. And we mentioned, and I like the fact that we're on foods now because I've been watching Netflix. What? See? And you thought it couldn't be. You said it couldn't be I, done. I, I don't even know how I mean, I can't do it myself. I have to have one of my kids there to well, get me, you know. Anthony Bourdain. Mm -hmm. Parts unknown. Yeah. And he eats, he goes to different countries or uh, different states and eats strange foods. Yeah. So the program we were watching was about Mexico and the food that he, and the people there were surprised <clears throat> that he was willing to eat these foods yeah, yeah. because most Americans wouldn't eat them. Um, but it's, it, it, it's something that, you know, we say, well, it's the parents' fault that a child has a restricted mm -hmm. uh, variety mm -hmm. of foods. And it may not be. It just may be their personality right. is they are less open to new yeah. experiences, including new foods. And so some kids are going to have a very limited range. Right. Other kids will eat anything. Right. It's not be the same parents. Yeah. I mean, I have three children and some of them are adventuresome eaters and some of them aren't. Right. Okay. Um, they were all experienced to the same things in the same way. So it may be that your child is has a restricted diet simply mm -hmm. because it's part of their personality. Yeah. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And, and you'll see this continue in, in school right. and, and other intellectual uh, areas. You know, those people who, you know, I remember when I was in college, um, I took some pretty uh, extreme classes uh, to study things that I've, you know, never, never I took some very um, atypical, uh, even religion classes and, and just... Um, uh, um, for an engineer. Uh, right, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, anthropology classes and things like that because not they weren't required for my major or anything. Uh, well, maybe they were at the time because I changed my major a whole bunch of times for the same reason. <laughs> Depending on what uh, you were majoring in that semester. Whatever that semester was. Right. But, uh, but yeah, you, you know, you, you try these different things out because there's just so many fascinating things in the world. And, and right. people who are more open tend to be very... Uh, energized and, and fueled and, and driven mm -hmm. by some of that intellectual curiosity right. and that, that, that sort of willingness to a, a explore and openness to um, new things. Right. I really think yeah. about it and associate it with critical thinking. You know, they're, they're very open to the idea of 
hearing other people's perspectives of things mm -hmm. and using it to even challenge their own views and right. beliefs and perspectives That's just right. because it's new and it's different. And mm -hmm. um, so, yep. so, so when you think about this idea of openness, you know, oftentimes, again, we're, we're really getting to one's personality and, and one's drive to, to experience new things, to right. try new things, to, to, you know, sort of venture outside of their realm of nor normality mm -hmm. and, and, and experience something different. Or out of their, we call it a comfort zone, you know, move out of the comfort zone. So. Yeah. So we, we've talked a lot on the podcast before about change. People who ha are open to new experiences mm -hmm. are, are much more amenable to change right. mm -hmm. than those who are, are less open. Right. You know, those people who, who seek that um, sameness, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they, they are less open than... But again, we want to emphasize there's nothing wrong with being less right. open. Right. Okay. It, it's not that there's some advantage. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just how your personality happens to right. be structured. Right. Um, and so it's not that if you're open, it's better than if you're not open. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's just uh, it, it's sort of the way you're built. Right. Mm -hmm. And we do have, we, we do have, uh, other for, some forms of psychopathology that that right. demonstrates the extremes of these. Mm -hmm. OCD, for example, right. is the extreme end of the closedness, if we want to use that. But word. it's also off the it's off the continuum. Right, I right. Mean, it's in a different. It's not. It's not that if you're so closed, you have OCD. If you have OCD, you're in another place. Right. Okay. Um, and and we'll talk uh, about uh, a characteristic called. Um, uh, OC, uh, obsessive compulsive personality, personality disorder, disorder. Right. and OCPD again is it would be characteristics on that far end of the personality mm -hmm. uh, trait right. Of, right. of openness. Now the other end, of course, uh, we're going to go back to ADHD <laughs> again. I think with the impulsivity right. and just that sort of gregariousness of, mm -hmm. of getting out there and trying different things and doing things that you've never done before. That that constantly seeking novelty. You know that is a very common trait and characteristic of, right. of ADHD. Sometimes we refer to it as the adrenaline junkie right. who's always, right. who needs to have that high level of stimulation mm -hmm. all the time. Absolutely. Right? And, yeah. and it can get in the way because there are times when you have to slow down once Absolutely. in a while. So. Yeah. So again, but those those are <clears throat> but sort those of are psychopathological. Right. Uh, back in the day when we used to have the, the five axes from on yes. which we made diagnoses, uh, those things would have been axis one, whereas some of these personality traits and everything would be yeah, on true. axis two. Right. Uh, so it would be, I miss they are the differentiated. Axes. I do too. I, uh, I thought it, it made it very those. easy and yeah. very... Uh, put, put things into categories. We right. like to categorize things. Absolutely. I miss those. Yeah. So, but... All right, but that's openness. openness. Openness to new experiences, mm -hmm. openness right. in, in one's interest in seeking new things and right. seeking new experiences. So mm -hmm. uh, that's the second of the five. Second of uh, five. Uh, right. Of the big five that we're going to talk about. So, But we will be back tomorrow to it's talk it. about the next one, which will be conscientiousness. conscientiousness. Right. Oh, so, one of yes. them. Are we going to say one of your favorite? Conscientious. He's gonna Are say, you conscientious? I'm so glad we're going to talk about this. We're finally going to talk about this. Right. So, um, but we'll be back and we'll talk about that next time. Uh, but until then, stay happy, stay healthy, and forget to be afraid.